the parts he's played in movies like Inception, Mad Max Fury Road and The Revenant made British actor Tom Hardy famous. Stay tuned because this video is dedicated to his life, career and of course his vast car collection. London's Hammersmith neighbourhood, England, Edward Thomas Hardy was born on the 15th of September 1977. Throughout his adolescence and early adulthood, Hardy battled alcoholism, drug addiction and delinquency. Hardy continued his acting studies at the famed Drama Centre London and the Richmond Drama School despite his problems. Hardy's acting prowess improved as a result of his extreme dedication. In the acclaimed military drama miniseries Band of Brothers, Hardy's 2001 debut propelled him to fame. He appeared as a left-behind soldier in a popular war movie, Black Hawk Down, that same year. Hardy, who had previously only appeared in military dramas, was cast opposite Patrick Stewart as the main antagonist in Star Trek Nemesis. Hardy played many roles in movies and television shows. He established a clandestine theatre company in 2006 with Shotgun's director's help. In addition to starring in Stewart, A Life Backwards, which earned him a British Academy of Film and Television Arts nomination for Best Actor, he also directed Blue on Blue, a play written by his father. In the movie Rock and Roller, Hardy played a particularly interesting character as a gay hoodlum, and for his portrayal of Bronson, the most violent prisoner in Britain, he received a British Independent Film Award. The next year, he took up the role of Heathcliff in Wuthering Heights. He later received additional notoriety for playing Eames in the surrealist movie Inception. Hardy appeared in two blockbuster films in the summer of 2012, The Dark Knight Rises and Lawless, which was about a pair of bootlegger brothers during the Great Depression. He played Alfie Solomons in the British gangster drama Peaky Blinders before securing the lead role in the critically acclaimed Mad Max Fury Road. In The Revenant, a terrifying 19th century movie about two men who develop a deadly rivalry in the wilderness, Hardy co-starred alongside Leonardo DiCaprio. He also had a part in Venom. He is currently married to Charlotte Riley, and the two of them have two lovely children. Additionally, he shares a son with his ex-girlfriend, Rachel Speed. Given his talent, it is hardly surprising that he is both wealthy and well-known. The professional actor has an impressive collection of automobiles in his garage and a net worth of $45 million. With that said, let's see what cars he has in his collection. Here are the eight cars we can see in Tom Hardy's garage. At number eight is the Audi RS5. The Audi RS5 Coupe offers maximum performance and masculinity over its more restrained predecessors, the two-door A5 and S5, thanks to a 444 horsepower twin-turbo V6 and an aggressive look. The RS5 competes with rivals like the BMW M4 and the Mercedes-AMG C63 Coupe thanks to its additional power and track-focused technology, but at a sustainably higher price. The inside of the RS5 combines a variety of luxurious materials with cutting-edge technology. The standard front sport seats are supportive during turns and comfortable for long drives. For the comfort of the driver and front passenger, they also have massaging features. There is a panoramic sunroof, three-zone climate control and ambient interior lighting in every cabin. The fully digital instrument cluster, heated steering wheel and diamond stitching are available extras for those who want an even more opulent experience. Its outstanding driving position and exceptional visibility, at least for a coupe, are supplemented with a back seat that can fit two adults of average height. At number seven is the Audi R8. In the brand's lineup, a spaceship touches down. When the Audi R8 debuted more than 10 years ago, that is how Audi characterised it. At the time, we were accustomed to Audi's methodical approach to its standard models, as well as its sporadic forays into motorsport, most notably with the storied Audi Quattro rally vehicle. A supercar, though, that was new. 
Additionally, the R8 has earned the respect of his adversaries after around 10 years. The fantastic 5.2-litre V10 engine in the Audi R8 is available in two different tunings. Performance versions with rear-wheel drive have 562 horsepower, while performance Quattro variants with four-wheel drive have 611 horsepower. Although the steering wheel on the Audi R8 doesn't have quite the same range of adjustability, it is comfortable and you can easily find your ideal driving position. Even during a lengthy journey, the seat itself is comfy and won't cause you to experience severe back pain. When you exit the R8, you'll feel more like you've driven a sports car like the Audi RS3 than a supercar. Standard features including front and rear parking sensors, a reverse camera and good night vision from the standard LED headlights make manoeuvring less stressful. At number 6 is the Porsche 930 Turbo. As a result of its dominance in the Can-Am racing series in 1972 and 1973, Porsche decided to make its turbocharging technology available to devoted consumers. The additional Turbo made its debut here in 1976, a year after its 1974 Paris Auto Show debut. Porsche gave the Turbo a new type number, the 930, as a result of its radical departure from the 911 design. The visual threat was increased by the addition of a front spoiler, enlarged and flared fenders, and a floor that would put Shamu to shame. Upgrades were made to the suspension, braking, wheel and tyre components. Porsche replaced the five-speed transaxle with a new aluminium box that has four strong gear sets and a bigger clutch than the 911's magnesium-cased counterpart. The 930's interior includes all the distinctive features of the vintage 911. Tombstone seats, pedals that open from the floor, incomprehensible heating controls, and a steering wheel that hides the dials. At number five is the Cadillac Seville. The ability of a car eventually becomes mostly taken for granted as you move up the cost spectrum. And what the automobile says about you starts to matter more. The Cadillac Seville has struggled with this issue for years. The American juggernaut has dipped so many toes into the shark-infested European luxury automobile market that you'd expect it to be nursing some pretty serious wounds. However, in 1998, Cadillac made a greater than ever comeback with the Seville. The North Star V8, which is unique to Cadillac, powers the Seville. The North Star V8, which has an output of 275 horsepower in the SLS, and 300 horsepower in the STS moves the Seville quickly and quietly at almost any engine RPM. Due to its sophisticated build and design, it can provide features like a limp home mode that enables operation even in the event of a complete coolant loss and the capacity to go 100,000 miles before requiring a tune-up. Number four is the Range Rover Sport. With the Range Rover Sport, the clue is in the name. Land Rover hopes that this vehicle will appeal to those who appreciate the notion of a Range Rover, yet desire a premium SUV with a little more sport. The recipe is delicious. Moreover, it is a smart one. Because the Range Rover Sport is built on the same platform as its full-size sibling, it can benefit from the larger vehicle's opulent interior, innovative off-road technology and strong engine lineup. The P400 gasoline engine and the D300 and D350 diesel engines are among the three-litre six-cylinder engines available for the Range Rover Sport. Although the D300 is the slowest accelerating engine in the lineup with 296 horsepower and a 0 to 60 mile an hour time of 6.3 seconds, it seems powerful enough to move this large, luxurious SUV around at a high rate of speed. The D350 diesel accelerates from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.6 seconds, but we don't think the additional cost is justified. A fantastic driving posture is provided by the Range Rover Sport. The positioning of the steering wheel and pedals makes sense, and the front seats and steering wheel both have a huge range of adjustability. Number three, the Mercedes G-Class. The Mercedes G-Class is unmatched in its ability to travel off-road and in terms of luxurious credentials. However, just because Mercedes's retro-styled opulently furnished SUV costs six figures, 
and boasts luxury extras like massaging front seats doesn't mean it can navigate genuinely hazardous terrain. The SUV's 416 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque twin-turbo V8 engine make it both speedy on the road and capable off-road. The car's engine transmits power through an obedient 9-speed automated transmission and comes standard with all-wheel drive. The inside of the G-Class is all about luxury and offers greater room for passengers and cargo than the model from the previous generation, which adds to its off-road prowess. 12.3-inch completely digital instrumentation, heated leather front and rear seats, power steering column adjustment and three-zone automatic climate control are all included as standard equipment. A heated steering wheel, Nappa leather upholstery, massaging front seats with ventilation and a digital gauge display are all available to consumers with a few option checkboxes. And number two is the Chevrolet Suburban. The engine lineup for the Suburban is completed by two V8s and a diesel six-cylinder. All of them are connected to either rear or all-wheel drive and a 10-speed automatic transmission. The Suburban has significantly more cargo and passenger room than its predecessor. Legroom in the second and third rows has increased by a few inches, and the second row seats now feature adjustments that allow them to glide forward and backwards. The Suburban's independent rear suspension allows for a lower load floor and an increase in cargo space of 23 cubic feet, which makes up to a total of 145 cubic feet. The majority of its well-liked features, such as wireless phone charging and heated and ventilated seats, were already present but the head-up display is now larger than before. Starting with the LT variant, a 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster is included as standard. And at number one is the BMW i8. Due to electricity's ability to improve performance, hybrid sports cars are becoming more and more popular. Nevertheless, the BMW i8 is more about looking fast than actually being quick. Regardless of whether it's dihedral doors open on the hardtop coupe or convertible roadster, the BMW nevertheless offers a jaw-dropping arrival. In the i8, BMW only provides one power plant. It combines an 11.6 kilowatt per hour battery pack, two electric motors, and a 1.5 litre three-cylinder gas engine. All four wheels can be driven by the 369 horsepower that the three power sources can provide when combined. The front seat occupants won't feel crowded even though the i8 places more emphasis on appearance than functionality. The folding top in the i8 Roadster takes up the area that the coupe's jump seats would have taken up, leaving only enough room for two passengers. Heated power seats and a leather-like finish are included as standard inside elements. Now, after this crazy car collection, I'd like to share one of my favourite quotes from the star of today's video. We are survivors. We control the fear, and without the fear, we are all as good as dead. Everybody experiences fear from time to time. It's unavoidable. And while we may believe that we desire to be fearless and no longer experience such feelings, when you truly think about it, what do we experience after overcoming our fears? Do we feel happier? Or do we feel more alive and energized? We feel strong and alive when we overcome fear. Without fear, we would merely be empty shells. Fears play a role in who we are as people. Embrace your fears and overcome them. Thank you for watching this episode. If you want to see other celebrity car collections, let me know in the comments below. Please make sure you like and subscribe to this video and channel, since that'll help us make more content like this for you to enjoy.